Hi, everybody. Welcome to my Facebook Live celebrating Women's History Month and specifically Mary Brooks Pickin. The language of fashion, we're talking about Mary Brooks Pickin and the celebrating women's history today. I think we've, I see comments and people coming in. So hopefully we're back live and we've got it rolling again. What do you think, Michelle? Are you seeing the activity? Yes, I think we're okay. Okay, here we go. One more time, guys. Thanks for your patience. Uh, we'll make it worth the wait. Talking about Mary Brooks Pickin, her story and the story of her writing this wonderful fashion dictionary, the language of fashion. We also have an, several other books and um, stories of Mary to share today. So to start with, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about, um, first of all, giveaway is the language of fashion dictionary. So I see people commenting, hi, Nancy. Let's see, there's Sue. Thank you for commenting. Hi, Kate, glad you're here comment to win and Michelle will pick our our winner later on in the episode. So stay tuned for that. And Mary Brooks Pickin, the, the exciting thing about her story is it actually, much of it starts here in, in Kansas City, in my town. Um, and she was educated originally at a school called the American College of Dressmaking that was in downtown Kansas City. So this was their um, coursework. And I wanna show you their, their, their manual because this is in my collection. This is their manual of all of the curriculum in the program. And this program was a correspondence school and so it really, and Mary being a supervisor there, she taught there, um, it informed her in her developing the Women's Institute course in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And many of you know, my the Women's Institute and Mary's work there was really what inspired my book, Vintage Notions. Um, so that book is a curated collection of the content and the lessons and the wisdom from that school. So Mary was educated in Kansas City and the story of the language of fashion dictionary actually starts there. So Mary's um, lost her first husband um, at age 21, I believe. And after that, she ended up um, moving back in with her parents in Kansas City. And um, of course she was distraught and recovering from such a, a terrible loss at such um, a young age to lose her husband. And ironically, her second husband, whose name was G. Lynn Sumner, encouraged her to write the language of fashion book. And the reason he encouraged her was um, she had a shoebox full of fashion terms and their definitions. And it was his idea to take that shoebox and turn it into the um, dictionary, the language of fashion. So where did that shoebox come from? Well, this is an article that I have that ex explains it in detail. And I'll just read it to you quickly. Um, she returned to her parents' home after her first husband died at a very young age. Um, she, with the help of her father, began collecting definitions um, of fashion terms. When she remarried, she was still carrying little scraps of paper around in a shoebox and using the definitions in her classes to impress the words on her students um, say one was fine if she could not remember the definition at, when asked the second time. Well, that's interesting. Um, her husband insi insisted she do something with the words and she sat to work to form the fashion dictionary. There are over 11,000 definitions and descriptions in the work and hundreds of illustrations. Um, so 
I thought that was pretty, pretty exciting to learn that story of how her father had helped her um, lift her spirits through learning the definitions and having that purpose after she had lost um, her first husband. So a little history lesson on the language of fashion. So I'll show you also some cool, this is stuff in my cool content in my collection. This was actually the, the cover um, of another version of the language of fashion, which is right here. Um, and you can see that, I'm gonna look, show you the back. There's a little picture of Mary, probably in her middle, middle years. But I also have a couple other pictures to share with you of Mary. So you might have seen me share this little booklet on a recent Facebook Live. This is the, um, I think I shared it in February because it was the anniversary of the founding of the Women's Institute. So this book chronicles the coursework from the Institute. And there's Mary at the beginning of when she had founded the school in 1916. Um, and this little book is available and it just shares the course and, and how, is, how it was structured. So if you needed to make a sun, sun bonnet, you were gonna learn how to make a sun bonnet in the Women's Institute course. Now, later, this is, a, this is a photo I have of her that I bought, um, I probably found on eBay. It's kind of hard with the lighting that we have here with our ring lights, but there you can see Mary. And she's holding a, a vintage pattern. At the time, it wasn't vintage. And some fabric. And I think she has a tool there. And I imagine that tool, maybe she actually uh, created. Because in my collection, I have one of her tools. So I thought I'd share that with you today. So this is the dressmaking guide. Save time as you sew. Um, so Mary... This may look familiar to modern tools that we have in the sewing market right now, but you can see at the bottom, it says that it was a Mary Brooks Picken. Um, it was one of her, designed by her, her and it called Mary Brooks Picken, the famous home sewing authority, right? So she really was well known. She was really, I would say, the she was probably the, the Martha Stewart of her day and we like to I like to call her the fairy godmother of fashion and dress and so I've as many of you know I've spent a lot of time researching her life met her family at different times um and it's been a wonderful journey she has m so much wisdom that is timeless in its appeal and practi practicality um so the fashion dictionary we talked about, right? There's another very exciting book that Mary authored. And I'm going to talk about that now. And many of you may have heard of this book before, The Singer Sewing Book. So I have a few of my, in my collection to share with you. Here's um, one version without the actual um sleeve or dust jacket. And then here are a couple, I always think it's fun to look at the vintage um, graphics and photos on these. And then look at the, on the back cover, um, you too can enjoy sewing at home. Little picture of that happy family in their living room. Um, look, admiring the, the fun clothing and garments. And of course, Back in the day, singer there were singer store, sewing stores on almost every corner. Um, I forgot how many thousand singer sewing, sewing stores um, at, were on out in retail at the height of the industry and sewing's brand. Um, but I wanted to share that one with you. And then one more. And you can see here where Mary Brooks Pickin, there she is, her name on the cover. I thought this was love the color of this one. So um, I wanted to share those with you. Of course, I have some newer versions of that, because that book, the Singer Sewing book, 
I believe it sold 8 million copies in its uh, lifespan and was, um, I think it maybe 12 different languages that that book was translated to. So you can see the impact that Mary had really on an international level. Mary, she's, you can see how much I um, enjoy learning about her and sharing her work and have done that through my book, Vintage Notions, and then also through other books I've created. And again, I want to stop for a second. I can see some comments, so I'm going to look at the comments and it looks like we've got Sharon's out there. Hey, Sharon. Sharon told me she was going to be on today and I'm. it's good to see her name. And who else is out there? Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, and Bob's out there, my husband. Hi, Bob. I'm not sure if my mom's out there or not, but I wonder if Michelle's mother's out there. <laughs> Michelle's watching. She's here helping me. Oh, and there's Marcy. Thanks for, thanks for being on, Marcy. Okay, you guys. Um, so books by Mary Brooks Picken. I have not only used her work to inspire my book, Vintage Notions, but I've also taken some of her original publications that were, uh, you know, in a in the situation that I could republish them, republish them. They were not under copyright, so I was able to do that. And I've done that in several different books that are in my um, collection that you can find at amyberrickman.com. You can also find these books that I'm talking about on um, at my Amazon shop, which you can see if you go to the homepage of amyberrickman.com, you can see a link to the Amazon store. So those are just ways you can find these. I will tell you that I do have an exciting giveaway coming up um, next week. I'm doing it on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, hop on over to Instagram after this live and you'll want to join on um, Amy Berkman Studio. Search that. But the fun thing we're going to be um, giving away is not only the whole collection of my Mary Brooks Picken and Women's Institute books, but also a um, fun Aliso iron. And so I'm pretty excited about that. I'll share a little bit. This little iron is so awesome and fun and easy to use. I've been thrilled to, to be able to learn about it and... Um, use it while we've been doing some membership work this week and, and creating some fun things for a membership. So in addition to that event or next weekend, it'll start on that giveaway. will start on Thursday that we're doing on Instagram, but on Wednesday, a day before that, which the date I wanted to mention the actual date, which is March 24th. I am going to work with a nonprofit here in Kansas City called the Sewing Labs. I talked about them last week. They have an event called Making Her Story or Her Story, Making History. Get the uh, the pun on word there, on words there. Um, so that event is coming up, which I'm going to be involved in. It's in May, so you have plenty of time to plan for that. But on Wednesday, I'm going to go live. I'm going to go down, head on downtown in Kansas City and go to the headquarters for the sewing labs. And Linsa, who is the program director, and I are going to do a recycling project and show some techniques for recycling. And that live will be hosted on Singer's um, North American Facebook page. So... I think I gave Michelle the information. I think she's going to help me and put it in the comments. So if you guys want to watch on Wednesday, I believe it's at noon, um, you can see some fun ideas for recycling. We're going to use men's shirts and do a project, one of the projects in the Vintage Notions book. So I hope some of you will remember that and hop on um, and keep on commenting and letting me know you're there, you know, let me know where you're watching from. It's always fun to see people from all over having the opportunity to, to join me in these live events. And um, 
we're lost again, but we're back. How are you, how are you doing, sure Michelle? If, if the, the comments are coming through, okay. it's posted in a while. So if you are there and you can comment. Yes, if you haven't, if you guys could give us a shout out in a comment, we would love to see it. We just want to make sure that we're coming through and you're able to comment. Again, we're always trying new things and trying to make this better, but sometimes our technical side can be a bit of a challenge. So again, thanks for your patience. What do you think, Michelle? Are we getting any comments? New comments? No. Well, uh, Lynn commented from, Lynn's telling me she's from Central Ohio. Thanks. There we go. Diane, you can see me. Thanks, Diane. Okay, that's great. I'm glad I, Diane's out there. Okay, it looks like I'm seeing some comments again. We don't want to lose you guys before we have a chance to do the giveaway, right? Um, who's ready for some basketball? If you, um, if you're going to cheer for a, you have a team you're cheering for in the um, March Madness, comment with your team. I'm going to be watching some basketball over the weekend. Maybe it's watching basketball, maybe sewing some mother of pearl buttons while I'm watching basketball. Um, working on some gingham projects, maybe doing some um, embroidery. Okay, it looks like we're, you guys are still out there. I see I'm coming through. Okay, good. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate you con the commenting. It really does help help us know that we're good to go. So if you're new to watching me, I will just give some quick information. One o'clock central on Fridays is when I present my live events. And if you enjoy it and you have friends that might enjoy watching, invite them, tell them about it. Um, it's something you can do from afar, whether they're across the country, you can both hop on and watch the episode. If you've missed episodes and you want to maybe see some of our previous episodes, you can go into the Facebook group and in the Facebook group, Vintage Made Modern, there's something called guides. And if you click on guides, you will find a um, list of all the live events I've done. Last week, um, we did, well, we've done red work. Last week, we did crazy quilting. And because it's National Quilting Month, FYI. And I think it's National Quilting Day tomorrow. And it's the first day of spring. So we all have to be excited about the first day of spring and daffodils and crocus, sunshine, green color, you know, just seeing the, the landscape blossom is so inspiring and just makes this time of year so pleasant. So I think... What do you think, Michelle? Can you think of anything else I've forgotten? I guess I could tell you the, the fashion dictionary it is, if you don't win it, it is available on amyberkman.com as a PDF or an ebook. But for the ebook, you would, you would, it comes in two parts. So you can get A through M and then N through Z. And, you know, one thing that I think is kind of fun with this book is, the fact that you could, if you buy the PDF, you could print pages of this book and use them like say in, um, if you do collage or mixed media, the book actually can lend itself to um, being kind of ephemera, modern ephemera that you could combine in projects. Or we even used the pages of this book, the definitions, as part when we did a fabric line for my vintage notions book and we had one panel of fabric or one print that took pages from the dictionary and collaged them onto fabric so not only could it be a resource for um you know education and knowledge it could also be a resource for crafting 
We've even made a clipboard, I think, that we have a blog post on that uses a page of the dictionary that we just, you know, um, mod podged onto a, a clipboard. And speaking of blogs, you can visit my blog. I'm posting new blogs almost every week. This week, I pictures of the quilt from last week's, the crazy quilt from last week. So if you love looking at vintage textiles and learning about technique and um, fabric, be sure to check out my blog at amyberkman.com as well. And of course, I always give a plug for my newsletter. I That's another way to keep posted on what live I'm doing each week and any new products that we might be sharing, um, any events that are happening where I'm sharing you know, information or if we have a free printable or PDF. A couple weeks ago, I shared a whole alphabet of monogramming that is in free printables on amyberrickman.com. So I try to um, really give you a, a good amount of valuable information in the newsletter that beyond um, just telling you about new products. So I think we're at a good spot, Michelle, to maybe draw a winner. What do you think? Michelle's yeah. just over here this time. I think I'm having some technical difficulties on my end. Oh, she's but okay. I'm doing my best to try and, and refresh and look at all the comments. Okay. We'll look at all the comments and see. And we, I know some of you may be joining from the page and some of you may be joining from the, the group this time. Um, and again, like I said, we're learning how to use some of this technology. Like today, I'm on my last week when you guys watched, my mom and I were sitting at my computer using a, like a webcam to, to go live. And today we switched gears and moved back to my phone. I think what we've learned is that we might want to stay on a computer where we have a, a real solid, um, stable connection going forward. Um, what do you think of that, I Michelle? Agree. <laughs> Michelle agrees that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go back to the um, yeah the the stable connection. But again, we appreciate your patience, and you know I could try to pick somebody, Michelle, unless Actually, or I do have you have name. somebody? Yes. Okay, Michelle has a name. All right. Okay. Jessica Foster. Jessica Foster, you are the winner today of the language of fashion. So. I will need your information, your, can I say it? Your street address. And if you could um, send that to me at info at amybarrickman.com, or you could message me in Facebook Messenger with, and message the page with your information. And so Jessica is the lucky winner. Congratulations, Jessica. And again, Look forward to next week. I'll be back at One Central and we'll have more to share. I'm, we'll have another giveaway. And if you want to know what I'm going to be sharing in the live, as well as what the giveaway might be, you could, again, just make sure you sign up for my newsletter at amybarrickman.com. And again, thanks for your patience today with a few of our technical difficulties. And don't forget, Wednesday, um, Singer North American Facebook page will be live with the Sewing Labs. And um, again, Instagram, don't forget the event when this darling little iron will be starting that giveaway next Thursday on Instagram, which is Amy Barrickman Studio. So I hope I'll see some of you following my page um, in the next few days. Have a great weekend. Have fun watching basketball. And oh, I almost forgot. Michelle, remember? <laughs> Here I have Bill Self. And I don't know if you know Bill, but he is the coach of the Kansas Jayhawks. And that is my alma mater. And they are a powerhouse in basketball. 
I've had, they won the national championship when I was in school. So I had to give a shout out to the Jayhawks for this weekend. I'm not sure how far, far they'll get. Truth be told, I did not pick them in my, um, as the winner in our family bracket for March Madness. Um, but I'm still, I'm still hoping that they come out as winners. There's Bill. All right. Thanks guys. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.